This show is dedicated to all the guys who watch for your home and the people that decorate for them. We're going to create the ultimate gentleman's quarters. We're going to start with a great place to watch TV, play cards, and enjoy an ice cold beverage. Then I'll show you how to make working from home a real pleasure. That and much more coming up today on For Your Home. For Your Home is made possible by Anderson Hardwood, committed to producing distinctive, environmentally responsible hardwood flooring while helping to create a better planet for today and tomorrow. For more information, go to andersonfloors.com. Anderson, naturally. And by Ames. Ames True Timber has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Custom Home Furnishings Academy, where the professionals learn to sew window treatments. process of building this 5,700 square foot home, I have tried to enlighten you on all the decisions that you as a new homeowner will need to make. And I'm sure you'll agree that there have been hundreds. From roofing and stone to appliances and countertops, we have left no stone unturned, literally. Today it's more about the details than the big picture. This is the gentleman quarters of our house. Now, just because it's downstairs, don't think that we've skimped on any of the details. This is a wonderful place where you can kick back, watch your favorite football team or your favorite adventure flick. And then right over here is probably one of the most important parts of the downstairs, and that is the bar. Now, this has every amenity that you could ever hope for. First of all, let's start with the appliances that are down here. We have a refrigerator. And we have a wine cooler. And we don't want you to be walking upstairs having to take those dirty dishes up there. So we installed a dishwasher. It's a dishwasher in a drawer, which is wonderful because it's small in size, pulls right out, plenty of room for popcorn bowls and beer steins. Now, the countertops that we are working with are beautiful amber marble. And they tie in perfectly with our glass tiles on our backsplash. And glass tiles are one of the latest crazes in backsplashes and as well as in bathrooms. We've used them a lot of places in this house. Our cabinets are rich chocolate stain on them. Really beautiful, has a nice masculine feel to it. Now, in addition to this space that we have in here, the floor treatments are the top of the line as well. In the kitchen area, we have beautiful Italian porcelain tiles, and they have a lovely chipped edge on them that makes them look like real stone. I love that, and the color blends perfectly with our countertops. The other areas, we've used carpeting in this area. It's a nylon carpet, so it cleans up really easy. No worry if we have spills or messes, and it has a nice lighter color of chocolate to it. With dark color, would have made it too dark down here. Okay, place to play cards or games. Poker table, absolutely perfect. Now, the space is a little bit tight in here. The chairs are all on rollers. And if you want to have more room for the big game, it can slide right out into the room. We've got plenty of space over there. Now, when you're not using it as a poker table, all you have to do is simply flip it over and you have a beautiful finish of a wood top table. It's great for putting puzzles together or playing games. Now, one of the things that I wanted us to think about in this area is everything we've been doing down here is custom. Custom cabinets, custom countertops. Why not make custom artwork? Okay, our custom artwork, it's really fun to do. First of all, we are going to take our cards and we're gonna lay out that dream hand, right? One you always wish you could get. We've got our chips in place, we've got our cards out. 
And then all we're going to do is take our digital camera, we're going to take a picture of this layout, and then we're going to rearrange it and create another great hand and take a photograph of that. We'll simply take our digital image, upload it into our computer, and email it off to a company that can take this image. You can choose all different kinds of styles and techniques for that image to be made into wall art. We can have it in multiple colors. We can have different techniques that we can choose from. Once you find exactly what you want and the size you want, then they'll ship it out to you complete and you hang it on the wall and you have fantastic custom art that was created right in your own room. You can do all kinds of fun projects like that and I love it because it's much more affordable than going out and buying expensive art. Now for a bar, of course, you're going to need some bar stools and we selected these really beautiful leather accented bar stools. We have great seagrass woven into the back of them, leather arms and metal bottoms on them, really durable, easy to clean up. Now, what good would be a great room for entertaining if you didn't have a super place for the whole family and your friends to spread out on? This is where you want to put your money on a decorating project like this. A great comfortable sofa that has a chaise on one side and has room for three adults to set over here. Perfect view of the big screen TV. The thing that I liked about this leather couch, if you've had a leather couch in the past and you go, oh, Vic, I hate it, I was always messing with the pillows, this is so great because these cushions all zip right to the back of this couch. So you don't have any of that working down and sliding around. I love that, especially with the grandkids bouncing around. All right, for the rest of the room, we have a lot of flexible pieces, multi-purpose. You know how much I love that. Our coffee table in the center of the room it has two little stools that can be pulled out from the side, which are perfect for your kids to sit down on and play a game of checkers or chess or any kind of board game. Now, over the fireplace, look at the beautiful finish that we have. Now, this was originally drywall, and so we got Grace Finnegan to do a faux finish for us. And it's absolutely beautiful. She custom designed the color, and it makes it look like it's an all stone fireplace. A lot more affordable. We used a barn beam mantle just like we did upstairs. We're using the side bookcases for displaying and storing lots of party games and books. This room is ready for the whole gang to come over and have a great party and get together. Sooner or later, we all have to do a little work or at least check our Facebook page. This room could make anybody enjoy burning the midnight oil. When you're building a custom home, think about how you work. If you have a home office, you can really be very efficient. And this space has all the bells and whistles plus some. Let's start with the bones. First of all, you're going to need some kind of storage system to keep all your books, your paperwork. You know, these are wonderful big wide open shelves. They take up this whole entire wall so you have plenty of storage space. But don't rely on just open shelving. The reason that I love this unit so much, in addition to the beautiful furniture finish that we have, is that it's got lots of space that you can store your DVDs in. You've got shelving here, little cubby holes. So you can close the door on some junk and clutter if you want to, and then have nice display space on the sides of it. We selected a desk that has plenty of desktop surface. You know, that's really important when you're working because you want to be able to spread out your laptop and your paperwork. So this is a nice desk. It has a beautiful leather top to it with some nice gold leaf design on it. So it really fits in nicely with this space. Now, lighting is essential in any home office workspace. First of all, we've got natural light from the windows, but overhead, we've added a great task light. Now, this is an armorary, is the design style that it has. I love the deep, dark, flat black metal finish. And above it, we had our faux finisher create this beautiful rose compass. And if it looks a little off center to you, that's because it really does face to the north and to the south. So we've got a working compass above us in case we lose track of where we are. For other lighting tasks around here, we've got a great desk lamp. It's nice and low so it doesn't block our view and it can swivel for us to direct light where we want it. Now, you want to include artwork in a room like this because it needs to inspire you. I ran across these big, large canvases recently, and I fell in love with them. 
This one has a city motif to it, so it makes you feel like you're right in Manhattan, even though you're working right here in your own home. It was very easy to hang and put together. It's very lightweight, and it gives you a different look than maybe mounting a picture there. It just simply clips together and slides onto these little clips to hang. Now, we have some beautiful draperies that we're hanging at the window with a Chippendale design. Beautiful drapery hardware that echoes the black of the lamp fixture that we have in the center of the room. And now for the flooring in our room, we started off by having a beautiful dark wood, hardwood floor installed. And then we're accenting this space by using an all wool area rug. I love the subtle design in this as well, and it ties in beautiful with our armchair. Now this area, once we put all the finishing touches on it, would inspire anyone to get the job done. It's not all play and no work, or should I say work out. This is the room we've set aside to be our home workout studio. Now the room is small, but with a flat screen TV, some great workout equipment, and some creative art, anyone can get inspired to burn off those extra calories. Now this is the painting that I've chosen for this wall. And you know, it's photography mounted on canvas, so it has a great look to it, and it could inspire you to keep on running or walking right up that road but let's have a little more fun with it. This is a wall art kit, and it comes with add-on pieces. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's a layout that shows you a yellow road that we are gonna create that's gonna come down from this painting right on down to our wall. It's all numbered and laid out for you. So taking just one piece at a time, we're gonna take our first piece and bring it over here and line it up with your road. That's the first thing you wanna do and then just smooth it down to the wall. Don't put it down real hard now, just kind of let it lay there. After you're happy with it, you know you've got it on right, then you can go back and really burnish it to the wall. Now, we're gonna take our next piece right here, and this one is gonna come right off of the road again, just like this, and keep it all nice and lined up. And all you have to do is take one piece, following your instructions, one piece after the other, and just stick them on the wall. Once you're happy with the way that it all looks, then you can go back and burnish it down. What if you make a mistake? No big deal. You can just peel these right off, reposition them, and stick them back down. Or if you've changed your mind later and you've outgrown your artwork or you change your decor, it comes right off the wall without damage. Now, one of the things you wanna keep in mind though, this is a trick I learned, is if you look at your instructions here, you'll see how the dark purple goes on top of the lighter purple. Well, you want to make sure you put down the first piece, which would be J, before you put down B because it goes over the top of it. Really simple to follow. And like I said, don't worry if you make a mistake. I think this is going to be a fun project. It is just that easy to create great custom artwork in any room, and it's also just that easy to get on the road to fitness. Did you know that the EPA says that two to five times more pollutants are in the air inside your home than outside? Well, you want to make sure that you eliminate the dampness and the moisture in a basement and get rid of that bad, stagnant, toxic air, especially if you have allergies, like you can tell with my voice, I really do. So we wanted to install and kind of bridge that gap with a ventilation system. Now, this is the ventilation system we're gonna use. And the thing that I like about it is there's several different ways it can be installed. If you're doing a remodel at your house, and let's say you've already got a damp basement, this can set right on the floor like you're seeing it now. And this portion, which is the vent portion, it can be extended all the way up so that you can reach up to the top of the ceiling, and then it can be vented outside. And what does it look like when it's vented outside? Well, these are the little vents, just like your clothes dryer, very simple. And this is expandable, so if you have a real high grade on your basement, you can do it too. Now, if you're doing new construction, this unit is designed that can go right between the studs, and this would be behind the drywall. And don't worry about like closing this unit up with drywall because you don't have to do any maintenance with this ventilation system. We don't have any filters to change. We don't have any water trays like in the old dehumidifiers to deal with. You can regulate and change the number of times that the air is changed in this system. Normally six to 10 times a day, it's gonna to totally change the air, not only in here, 
but throughout your home. So it's a great way to keep lower areas nice and fresh and also freshen the other floors of your house. If you're only gonna add one feature to your backyard garden this year, why not make it a vegetable and herb garden? You know, herbs add great flavor to any dish, and they're good for you, especially if they're grown organically. Hey, Billy, how's our garden coming? Vicki, I think it's coming wonderful. What do you think? I love it. I think it's absolutely charming. Is that a word you use when you talk about gar gardens? You can always use that word. Okay. All love right. It. First of all, when you get ready, you've made the commitment you want to do a garden. Right. Site selection. Where do Site we Site selection put it? is the most important thing. We want to have at least eight hours of sun here all day long. Now, in this garden, we came out prior to putting it out and watched the sun with all these trees around and then picked this, this site right here. This was the location right here. This for was it. the location for this home. Well, you know, it's so pretty. Like I said, charming. You could put this anywhere in your backyard, and it, you know, it's not unattractive it's not unattractive and it's this is a, a simple small garden it's a 10 by 12. I like as you the can size see it's raised it. up uh -huh. and what we've done and this is an organic garden we have organic compost in here as well as organic fertilizers to help uh, uh, have a good healthy garden okay now you've got cedar chips right down the middle what's the purpose well, of this Well, this is what I call a harvest patch you know you can come right off the grass come right into the garden uh -huh. walk in you can harvest from this side or you can walk around the outside and harvest no mud on your feet run right back in the house whenever you forgot or you need a little bit more lettuce. Yeah, so or if you're having a party and you need some mint for those mimosas, this you is the place right to go. Huh? It, that's right. Now, what plants have you uh, chosen to select? Because this is the fall garden. It is a fall garden, and the thing about fall gardens, different times of the uh, uh, or different geographical areas, like up north, you may start as early as August. Okay. Now, here in the southeast, we've started this in September. We have Brussels sprouts, uh, spinach, a whole array of leaf lettuce. Uh, head lettuce. Uh, uh, and kale back there, I see as well. Got that back there for some decoration and color. Uh -huh. uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, all types of great things to eat around the house. Okay, and so we can do the, we can harvest these right up through the, the frost section. Oh, right on up to the frost, and some of them even a little bit afterwards. Okay, now the trellises in the back, I think decorative-wise, these are really super attractive, but you say they're multi purpose. They're multi-purpose. If you look at these, they, they're, we have now ferns hanging in them uh -huh. because we're in the fall. They'll handle uh, the weather a little bit better. But you can also put uh, 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 ornamental beans on them or regular green beans. Your squash can run okay. on them. Uh, so they serve squash both purposes. Cucumbers. So if you're in a neighborhood and you, you know, you're afraid your neighbors may not like a garden right That's there right. or something, this is a great way Could to you screen it. Somebody yeah, not they got to get garden. over it. There's one at the White House. They got to get <laughs> exactly over it. Exactly right. So there's a great screening uh, area that we have here. Okay, we've got an organic garden started, but how do we maintain that organic garden throughout the season? That's very, very, very good point. Now, in any area in an urban environment, you're going to have to deal with what? Rabbits, deer, yeah. and there's some great organic repellents that you can put out to control those. Now, when it comes to insects, there, you know, a lot of people are really getting on board with eco-friendly products, mm -hmm. and there's some cedar-based products that you can actually come out here and spray and manage your insects. So they're made from like cedar oil. It or is something? made from a red cedar oil, okay. and it's a great product. You can actually dab a little bit on you and put it underneath your ears for, oh, yeah, uh, if I'm for out mosquitoes. Perfume, uh... That's right. Well, or if you want to use it for perfume, you can. <laughs> okay, so this garden here, if would it feed a family of four? Oh my gosh, and two or three of their neighbors. So they're going to be real popular oh, if you put gonna in a real, garden here, Oh, they're going to be huh? real popular, yes. Okay, well, I love the idea that it is, you know, adds great value to the family dinner plate because herbs can be very expensive. I mean, if you go to the grocery store, you buy one little deal of parsley, it's going to be five bucks. Well, you have to remember you had to pay for the gas to get there, too, and that's the right, time. That's right, the Eagle car the carbon footprint that carbon we're doing right there. That's right. Okay. It's just real great convenient for any home to have a garden. It doesn't take a lot of work. Okay. All right. Now, would you recommend that any kind of mulch goes down on here for weed control, or we don't need to worry about it? You know, you always have to worry about weed control. Weeds, what, are everywhere, and uh -huh. for the light everywhere you look. So you just need to come out here and manage them. The great thing about, I think, about weeds in a garden mm -hmm. is when you're managing the weeds, you get to know your plants. And you can actually, you know, evaluate what's going on. And if you see something that's uh, uh, not doing right, manage it while you're out there. Plus, it gets you in the garden and really gets you. Uh, uh, yeah, and this is a great size. It's real manageable, and it's a wonderful opportunity for your kids to really learn oh. about nature and bring them back. You know, we're also concerned with, you know, field to plate. Right. That this couldn't be much closer than the field to the plate right here. That's right, and the kids are really going to enjoy helping you plant it as well as help you pick it. Okay, Billy, we have got 30,000 square feet of sod out here, all right? And we'll support this right now. 
now we want to keep it looking that way. So organically, how can we manage our yards? Well, first you want to make sure that you are using organics on your on your landscape because that's going to help not only the grass, but it's going to help the soil. Okay. And if you don't have a healthy soil, you're not going to have healthy plants. That's where it all starts. That's where it all starts is a healthy soil. You want to be able to have the breathability of that soil so that the root system can expand. Right, because it, can't it expand has to go down about six or eight inches from where it is way, right now. Way even beyond that. Okay. All right. So now... Let's talk about some of the real rules or the culture, as you say, of lawn care. Cultural practices. All right, mowing. Mowing. Uh, fescue, uh, summertime, four inches. Bermuda, inch and a half to two inches. Okay. If you're in the northeast, you want to cut your fescues probably two and a half, three and a half inches. Because it's not as hot there, so you can get away with a little bit shorter. You can cut a little bit lower, but see, when you cut lower, it opens it up to weeds. Okay, so, all right. And shortens Great. the root system. Love that. Keep those weeds out of there. Okay, how about bagging? Don't bag. That's a tough question there. A lot of people like to not bag because it's tough. Uh -huh. You know, you got to empty it somewhere. But you use those, you can put them in your uh, uh, compost, you can compost them. And if you start building up too much thatch, it'll actually start building up, cut off the air circulation around the grass and give it pythium and a disease called uh, rhizoctonia, brown Which patch. Which is a brown patch that brown we patch. see as you drive through You see it everywhere in every neighborhood. Okay, all right, watering it. Water right or don't water at all? And how do you do that? All right, let's say we have an irrigation system that has five zones. Okay. Let's put a rain gauge out, run the zones, accumulate an inch. So if you don't want to wait to that one inch the first time to figure out how long it's going to take to do okay. it, then run it for a quarter of an inch. Say okay. it took 15 minutes. All right, okay, so multiply so that, times four, we can handle that. Uh, you got that? Yeah. Okay, okay. I, that's, that's, what, what is it then? Uh -huh. that's one, one inch. One inch, okay. All right, so let's take it and run each zone 20 minutes. Okay run zone one, two, three, four, and five, and then come back. Now that ground is swollen, so that next zone of water that's going down okay. is gonna go further into the ground. You know with the cost of water, yeah. and yeah. as we need to conserve water, you should always water your landscape wisely. Okay, so you know, watch that rain gauge. Right. You know, have a system that has a rain sensor on it, which rain they have out there now. Rain sensors are absolutely That'll essential. That'll shut that if off. You, that's right, if you, have, if you have a system, have a, a rain gauge system on it. That'll knock that out. Okay, so it looks like to me, it's really just common sense, know the rules, and be organic wherever you can. That's right, and enjoy your grass. Thanks, Billy. All right, thank you. Lighting is one of the most important features when you're building any home. CJ is a lighting expert and has some great tips for you to consider when building. Once you've finalized your design layout with your architect, it is very important that you go ahead and consult with your lighting specialist to help you finalize little minor details that you may forget to consult with on your architect. Such things would be lighting layout for your kitchen. You always want to layer the lighting. For instance, you have recess cans, you have chandeliers over islands, you have under cabinet lighting. These are all key factors in helping you to prevent shadowing and also to give you fantastic task lighting for that general area. Once the home is in framing, you want to meet out with uh, your lighting specialist to make sure that you can lay out the lighting with that person as the house progresses. So after you hit your framing stage, you meet at the job and you're going to want to go room by room and discuss not only the light position, but also things that you're going to add into that room. Uh, for instance, you may have artwork and you're going to want to put a particular type of light on that like a low voltage halogen art light that's going to make that particular artwork pop for the room. Whenever deciding on the size of a chandelier, it's always important to get your lighting specialist involved. One key factor, for instance, is in a dining room, you want to take the length of the room plus the width of the room and add those two together. That's going to give you the minimum size. So if your room is 10 by 10, the minimum size chandelier that you're going to have is going to be 20 inches. The maximum size, you're going to take the table width, not the length, most people get that confused, but the table width, and subtract 12 inches from that. That's going to give you your maximum. So if your table is a standard 42 inch size width, then your maximum chandelier width or diameter is going to be 30 inches. Lighting controls are very important for a home, and this needs to be talked about at the beginning stages versus after the house is already unwired. For instance, in a dining room, you may want to add a dimmer. Uh, to the chandelier so that if it has a lot of candles, you can set the mood lighting as you need to when entertaining guests. Uh, for a kitchen, for instance, you probably wouldn't use a dimmer, but you may use a dimmer in a nursery or a child's bedroom so that you can go into that room while they're sleeping and not turn on a lot of lights just to get around the room.
know everybody deserves a space of their own, and I certainly hope I've inspired you today to start negotiating with your spouse so you can start making plans this weekend. Now, next time on For Your Home, we're going to be putting the finishing touches on this show house. So make it a date. Join me next time right here on FYH. If you would like additional information about today's guests or project ideas, please visit us on the web at foryourhome.com. We will do our best to help you out. For Your Home is made possible by Shaw Floors offers distinctive flooring options to fit a variety of decors. Shaw strives to have a positive impact on the environment by producing recyclable products like Anso Nylon Carpets and Epic Hardwoods. Shaw, where great floors begin. And by Ames. Ames True Temper has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Custom Home Furnishings Academy, where the professionals learn to sew window treatments. Mm -hmm.